Good afternoon. I'm Dave Shady, Director of the Division of Agriculture here in the state of Alaska. So sorry we're a little late. Uh, we've uh, had a lot going on this morning, like most mornings. But today we are really, really excited to be here talking about uh, the announcement of our new specialty crop uh, grants and our micro food security micro grants. So today with me I have Amanda Swanson. Amanda is holding down three or four <laughs> jobs right now working. She is uh, in charge of our marketing program. But uh, in the meantime, she's helping me with uh, the grants program because she's done that. She's been our loan officer. She's done a lot of wonderful things for us over time. And Amanda uh, is going to be here in the future working and she's going to be your key to Alaska Grown and Marketing. But as that be right now, we want to talk a little bit about uh, the announcement we got back from USDA yesterday mm -hmm. that we were approved for our specialty crops this year and we were approved for our $1.98 million food security micro grant. So what we're going to do is I'm going to let Amanda go down and we're going to talk about uh, the specialty crop grants that we're going to be giving out and then the next uh, probably a couple weeks before we get all the paperwork done, but mm -hmm. they're now yeah. approved. So with that, uh, Amanda, we'll uh, just run down through um, uh, little blurbs that we have here on the screen and mm -hmm. you can kind of tell us about uh, these grants that will be given out here shortly. Okay. Um, Alaska was awarded for 2020 about 251000 for specialty crop block grants. Uh, with that, we were able to fund six external projects. So I'll just run through what those projects um, that were awarded funding are. Uh, first one was the Alaska Farmers Market Manager and Specialty Crop Vendor Training Toolkit. Um, that will be Cook Inlet Keeper on behalf of the Alaska Farmers Market Association. will provide farmers markets and specialty crop vendors with foundational organization materials and best practices in order to build more uh, robust, safe, and consistent markets for direct local specialty crops. Uh, so they will be producing and distributing training uh, toolkits based on proven methods and stated market manager and specialty crop vendor needs. Uh, the next project that was awarded funding is the Chilkat Valley Orchard Project. Um, the Chilkat Valley Historical Society, along with the American Bald Eagle Foundation, will conduct outreach, outreach and education programs to expand community um, orchard knowledge, identify and assess local property, and advise property owners where significant new orchard production can strengthen the Chilkat Valley tree fruit production and economic competitiveness. Uh, the next one that was awarded was the Southeast Alaska Farmer Summit, a special, uh, forum for specialty crop growers. Uh, Farragut Farm will work with an advisory committee uh, consisting of five regional farmers, a UAF Extension Service Agent, and a USDA NRCS agent to organize and host a three-day comprehensive summit uh, to present on and discuss a variety of methods and strategies for sustainable and efficient specialty crop production systems, as well as safe and responsible post-harvest food handling techniques. Uh, the next uh, project is the Potential Distribution Systems for Kenai Peninsula Farmers. It's an in-depth comparison of various models. Uh, this was awarded to the Homer Soil and Water Conservation District, who will produce an in-depth guide for those interested in creating a distribution services for food from Kenai Peninsula Farms that compares various distribution models for coordination, uh, coordinating delivery for multiple small farms. Uh, the next one is a root washer development and workshop. This is uh, Alaska Pacific University will build, trial, and share through publicly available plans and a guided workshop, an affordable, uh, dependable mechanical barrel root washer to increase root crop processing efficiency and quality for Alaskan farmers. And the final external project is uh, assessment of damage caused by ligus bugs in Alaska peony production. This was awarded to the University of Alaska Agriculture and Forestry, Forestry Experiment Station, uh, who will assist Alaska peony growers in assessing damage caused by ligus bugs and make recommendations based off research results to stakeholders through publications and growers' meetings. We also have two internal projects that we were able to fund for the division. Uh, the first one is Alaska Specialty Crop Producers Harmonized Gap Cost Share Assistance and Group Gap Education. Uh, the Alaska Division of Agriculture will manage an Alaska Specialty Crop Producer Funding Assistance Opportunity for costs associated with obtaining buyer-required food safety, 
third-party process audits and certifications, specifically harmonized GAP and GAP Plus. The division will educate third-party, um, will educate industry on additional food safety auditing systems, group GAP, which is designed for small-scale producers and al an alternative to uh, third-party process audits. And the final one we are able to finance is Alaska Agriculture Export Market Expansion Project. Um, this is where Alaska Division of Agriculture will partner with outreach organizations and producers to encourage companies who use Alaska-grown specialty crops in their products to expand their market outreach and increase export opportunities to them by providing travel stipends. Um, the Division of Agriculture works with the uh, Western U.S. Agricultural Trade Association for um, international trade activities. We do um, outbound missions where we take Alaska-grown um, producers and take them to go meet uh, buyers in, uh, internationally. And this will um, help cover the cost of travel for our um, Alaska companies when it becomes safe to travel again. So, so that's really, really great news. Mm -hmm. Amanda, thank you for your and your team's work on working with USDA to get this done. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really, really excited about all of these uh, programs because as I told the commissioner in an email this morning, these are grants to support agriculture in our industry and moving forward. And that, that's right. really exciting to see these really positive outreach kind of programs. So. Mm -hmm. You know, one of, the, one of the things that I'm really excited in our GAP program is we are actually the contractor for the USDA to do gut GAP audits, mm -hmm. good agricultural uh, pro uh, handling uh, uh, activities. And it's fairly expensive to get done. And so the whole idea has been to take our smaller farmers that really can't afford a $1,200 audit and to mm -hmm. work with them and that you know they can apply and we actually have the funding to provide that service of course we work them through the process and then they're approved by the usda mm -hmm. we don't do that final thing and that's why it's so important and so expensive is you got to walk through the multi-level then we send it off and the usda approves and that really gets you into those retail markets which is something you're aware of is we have to have these audits we have to have these people licensed so they can get into these larger retail markets so this is really good I think it's also really exciting that we are going to be able to look at grouping the smaller farmers and that's part of that group audit. Mm -hmm. So this is pretty exciting how we can work with industry to increase the availability to the market where you guys can help get this into these markets. You know, that's been our $5 challenge, all these mm -hmm. different programs we're doing. And so it's pretty, and it's exciting to see that not only do are we doing our $1.4 million technical grant for mm -hmm. PEs on, uh, you know, how do we deal with thrips in that? We also have other folks looking at other bugs and other mm -hmm. challenges to our industry. And I think, uh, you know, we continue to have international marketing. I know that Flowers went to London this year again. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if uh, we got back to Vietnam this year. I don't know if you heard about that, but you know, it, it is exciting that we've, even during COVID, been able to continue that marketing strategy and that, and I know that you're doing some remote uh, kind of work with USADA. Mm -hmm. So do you want to just kind of tell what, you know, how that's laying out in the next year, and then we'll switch over to food security. But I, I really want people to know that you are continuing some of your international marketing during COVID, and so it'd be, maybe mm -hmm. you can just, a few words about the seafood one that's coming up in that. Right. Um, yes, yeah, so we are moving forward with virtual trade activities. So we have uh, one coming up in November with the seafood industry where we will be hosting um, online um, meetings with uh, buyers and suppliers in uh, Malaysia and Singapore. And then in December, we will be having an online webinar uh, with the Philippines. And so that will be for the seafood industry. And then next year, um, we have several trade missions planned. We have an um, outbound to Japan for uh, specialty beverage. And that will occur, um, I believe, in July. And then we have an outbound uh, for p and &E producers to Canada. And uh, so we are working on alternative plans. If we can't um, travel, we'll be doing virtual trade activities. and. Um, the trade activities are actually going to be a really great opportunity for Alaskans because I think we're going to be able to have even more um, trade activities throughout the year than we have previously. 
Um, so WSADA and uh, the states are working on developing like a best practices um, for doing these virtual missions and, and so that way we can help uh, even more in addition to the um, international where we're bringing in international buyers inbound and then outbound where we're going and meeting uh, with buyers. Yeah, I think it's pretty exciting the, the fact that some of the virtual meetings uh, make it actually more accessible to some of mm -hmm. our uh, industry folks because right. they don't have to fly to London, but they can, they can work on their computer from home and do mm -hmm. that. So I've been excited about some of the work you guys have been able to do to set this up. And then yeah. we'll send out the product and we'll let them, you know, that's going to be the fun logistics of getting the product, mm -hmm. you know, moved in real yeah. life because they want to see that flower. They want to see that product. So that's pretty good. So anything you want to talk about, especially crops or some of them that are ongoing, um, you know, because I know, you know, that, 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 you know, these are for three years. So about mm -hmm. how many do we have? I guess my question is how many ongoing specialty crop grants do we have uh, in operation right now? Um, we have probably at least six that are still ongoing. Um, there's been several that had to do uh, one year extensions because of the COVID. Um, so some of the projects that they had planned, they are moving into um, next year. Um, we have some from 2019, uh, like the Alaska Seafood Product Development and Market Assessment um, that the Alaska Fisheries Development Foundation is working on. Uh, we have a um, uh, exploratory locally grown apples to produce quality um, juice. That's with the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Uh, we also have a couple internal projects um, that we are still working on uh, from the 2017 specialty crop grant that have been ongoing. Um, we have the restaurant recognition uh, program that was kind of delayed uh, this year because of the restaurants having to be closed. Right. So we are hoping to pick that up again next year. And we also have just uh, contracted with Alaska Village Initiatives to do some outreach um, on the North Slope with Alaska Villages for specialty crop assistance. Right. So the point is that we, we grant these this year, but they're like three years of a right. project. So we're running multiple, you know, basically you got three years in a row and you just you drop off one year and you get another year. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a cool program in that every year we've got about a quarter of a million dollars that we're pushing out into the agricultural community so that's that's a good chunk of change that we keep just in the flow and like you said we've we can do extensions we can make it work for ourselves so you know great job i uh, really appreciate okay. all you and your team and and what everybody's been doing and with that so john could you go back to slide number two because we the other thing which i i think uh, i have had more requests for information on than any other thing that i've had as director is food security micro grants and the food security micro grants were a program set up by uh, the delegation in Congress uh, in the 2018 Farm Bill, which said that for Alaska, Hawaii, and our territorial items, we're going to be able to put out micro grants, small grants to enhance food security. And I've had more questions over the last year. When are you gonna do this? When are you gonna do this? I'm like, well, when a ag marketing service, mm -hmm. we call them AMS, and I'll try not to use acronyms because we get too many of those and we're used to them. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, the good news is finally, after almost a year, uh, they, the AMS got their number from OMB, some, some little project they had to do, and uh, we applied, and yesterday we have got an announcement that we have our first $1,980,000 yeah, $1, mm -hmm. worth of microgram funding available. So what does that mean? It means that step one of a multi-year um, authority has been put in place. So in the Farm Bill, every year that the Farm Bill is enacted, which is for five years, there's an opportunity for Congress to fund up to uh, a total of $20 million for this program. Of that, Alaska gets $40 million, so we've got up to $4 million a year that can be coming to the state. So first year they funded it at $10 million, so we've got $2 million, minus USDA's 3% 3 3 cut, we get the rest of the money. And so that's pretty exciting that we've got that. Uh, the, the delegation has informed me they're trying again for a, a, that funding in this current fiscal year 21 budget that uh, we have. So how are we gonna do this? And so the question is, 
uh, is going to be run through the division. And so I had John put up some, some, some information on the screen. So what are our priorities? Well, you know, the Farm Bill said the state agricultural agency is supposed to determine food insecurity for your state. Mm -hmm. And about the time I was working with the university folks and everybody, uh, a little thing called COVID hit. And it's not a theoretical issue anymore. It is food insecurity. Uh, we've been watching that for the summer. So here's what we've found. We have found that food insecurity is in all parts of the state. We have found that it is in um, different levels in different places. Uh, it doesn't meet what I would consider a normal framework. And so what we're finding is the biggest problems is the further off the road and air network you are, the more difficult it is to get your food. It's more expensive, it's more difficult. So we're at the end of the United States food chain and then our communities, the further out, the further they are. So what we're finding is that whole system is strained at times. So, what are our priorities going to be? Well, it's pretty simple. Local production. If you can grow it, if you can make it in that area, then you're not shipping it in. You don't have that problem. So that is going to be a priority we're going to look at. Education. A lot of folks call up and they say, how do we grow it? How do we do this? We have had different programs uh, for growing in the communities going on for years. Like you said, we're working with Alaska Village Initiatives. We're gonna continue that educational component. I know that I've, I think I've heard from almost every school district looking at what they can do with hydroponics, how they can take this, some of this funding and work in the schools to teach and grow in the school and in, in that local area. I think that's going to be a high priority. And of course, what we've really found to be a challenge during COVID is food storage. Uh, I, I've talked to some of the major distributors doing the USDA food box program and they can get the, the supplies to the community. The challenge is being able to store it in the community when it gets there. So while the, the statute and the program is going to be pretty open-ended on what you can apply for, we're going to look at that key element in the intent. How do you provide food security in the local area? And that's going to be the focus of the team that reviews this. So kind of the, the, the timeline, where are we going with this? So, you know, we're going to be doing this a lot like specialty crop to where we're going to start with a letter of intent program. So in November, we will announce that we will be accepting letters of intent, a, a, a way for you to make your proposal. And it, it's kind of like, and, and for the folks that are in specialty crop, they know exactly what we're talking about. So, uh, but there's going to be a lot of folks that are not in our uh, um, specialty crop program. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, Amanda and the team that, that works on this side are going to have to, we'll, 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 I think, write up some pretty clear instructions. Mm -hmm. We'll come up with a form. It'll be fillable PDF. You can email it in. You can print it out, you can mail it in, we'll even mail you out copies. We want this to go to anybody that wants to apply, and then we will take those in. So as we have talked about this program over the last few years, I've said over and over, it's going to be $5,000 per individual or $10,000 per organization. That's not exactly how it's going to work. Because when the Ag Marketing Service, AMS, wrote up the program, they said, well, that's not what the federal law says. What it says is this is a three-year grant for $5,000 per year up to, or $10,000 a year up to three years for groups and organizations. So the proposals can either be for one year, mm -hmm. or two years, or three years, with a limit of $5,000 or $10,000 per year. So as we set up this program, we will have that language in there so that we can look at how do we maximize the effectiveness of the funding. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why I, I'm going to be uh, a little slower in getting this out than we might is if we have a good assurance that we have more funding coming in from the federal government, in other words, we have $6 million rather than $2 million, 
it might change how we work and lay out that program. There's an opportunity for up to $16 million in the life of the Farm Bill for the state to have operating the program. And that is actually going to impact how we operate in the system. So while I would love to know that we have all the details, we don't. We are hiring a grants administrator who's one of their primary roles is going to be run this program because this is going to be a multi-year, multi-faceted program. It's going to be a bit challenging. So the keys, it's going to be focused on food security. You're going to be required to report back. So that's going to be one of the keys is you get the money, you're going to have to report back. There is a 10% match that is set up in this program. In certain high priority individual situations that can be waived. We will develop the criteria for a request for a waiver of the 10% uh, match because there may be some communities that's going to be difficult for them to do, but you know, it's going to be a priority if you have more skin in the game, you have the ability. Those are all the things that we're going to be looking at over the next month as we put this out. So we are really excited that we've got almost $2 million that we're going to be able to put throughout the state. We are really excited that there really is going to be limited amount of paperwork for you to do this. There's more paperwork than I wanted, but this is a federal program and they write the, they write the paperwork, we don't. So uh, literally, as Amanda can attest, I helped write this and put it in so I could learn how the system was and so I could make sure as a director, we're doing this as simply as possible. And so we're pretty excited that today we really are announcing, uh, you know, almost $2.2 million worth in grants that are going to go out to our ag communities. On addition, in addition to almost a million dollars of grants that we're operating on right now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is pretty exciting that Alaska's ag industry well, and I forgot our technical grant, which is 1.4 million. So $4 million in grants in the ag community right now. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. In, in this time, trying times of budgets, this shows you that we've been effective. Your team has been effective. You know, the people that have filed and put in for these grants have been making really good applications. Because as we said, we, are, we collect and we send these specialty crops, these technical grants, they compete on a national basis. USDA has to sign these off. We unfortunately are not able to give everybody their grant. There are some people that didn't get their grants. But what I also encourage is that if you get turned down, look at what got approved, talk to us about why you may have not been as strong as the others. Sometimes there's just not enough money to go around and we are not able to give money to good programs, good ideas, but you know, in the long run, you know, we really do look at where it is to make sure that we're trying to move the money around the state, trying to make sure we're looking at all the industries to support all the industries. You know, with specialty crop, there are limitations. It's gotta be for a specialty crop. So sometimes we look at other things, uh, well, like our micro grants, there may be some things we can do with micro grants that we can't do with specialty crop. So, you know, they're, they're, you know, fencing is an opportunity for micro grants. It's right in the bill. And normally that's not allowed in federal ag grants. I mean, that was actually some arm wrestling done on whether fencing was allowed or not because it's prohibited in other grants. And they go, well, this micro grant program into the federal law said fencing is allowed. So they had to make an allowance for that. So that was our sign, kind of some of the issues we've wrestled and dealt with over the last eight months. So with that, Amanda, um, is there anything, any ideas, any, any comments that you have for, for folks as they start thinking about how they would maybe move forward with, with that proposal because you do it with technical grants and there's a lot of folks that are not gonna know what we mean by this letter of intent. So maybe you can just give a short outline on kind of how that works. Um, yeah, so when you are uh, developing your grant proposal, I would just, uh, it might help to kind of develop like a sort of business plan model um, that will help you develop your grant proposal and what your plans are for the project, what your goals and objectives and 
um, outcomes are for when you are developing this and really take a lot of time to um, think about your project and how this could uh, benefit food security um, as, as a whole for Alaska. And maybe some of those that had applied for the specialty crop block grant, this might be another opportunity to kind of look over and, and refine your application and uh, you might be able to get financing through the micro grant for food security instead. Um, and as Dave pointed out, uh, fencing and um, livestock operations and herding operations that don't qualify through specialty crop, this is the micro grant for food security will be an opportunity for you as well. Right. And the other thing with, with micro grants is that you can pool your resources. Mm -hmm. So people and organizations can, can go together. How that's going to work, we're all a little bit, we haven't quite figured out all the details. Mm -hmm. But if you come in as a community and pool your resources with a bigger project, that is something under the micro program that, that is actually kind of encouraged so that these communities come in with a real solid plan as a community. And so we definitely are going to look at that mm -hmm. when you have these community programs that are supporting the community and the region as a whole. Like you said, that, that's a really, really good point that you know, it's not just the individual or one group, but they can come in together and that kind of gives, uh, you know, more resources for, for good ideas. And I know that uh, there's a lot of folks that have talked about hydroponics, greenhouses, things that, um, you know, with a little leveraging of the micro grant, they might be able to come up with a good plan in those areas. So uh, I'm not seeing uh, uh, questions. I thought there might be some questions. So what we're going to do is... Um, I have uh, one other recommendation. Sure, too. go right ahead. Um, on the uh, grant applications and the proposals, I would suggest spending a lot of time um, really looking over your budget. A lot of times when um, a grant isn't selected and the same with loans too is because the budget numbers didn't quite line up or right. didn't make sense. So the budget too, I would really spend some time on uh, reviewing that before you submit your grant proposal. Right. And you know, and, and that's a really great point. Budgets are key. Results are key. I, I think one of the challenges you guys have is, you know, how are you going to measure what's your metric to report back? on your success mm -hmm. and there, there's it's going to be simple form so that business plan that you're talking about your budget that mm -hmm. gives you your baseline for your metrics and your reporting and I think that makes a stronger uh, application so mm -hmm. very very good good point and uh, so we we've we will be working on this it will go out as we come together uh, it'll be on our Facebook it'll, page it'll be on our website and I am sure that in early November, we'll come back to, to the group on a Facebook Live and we'll walk through the application process and the criteria with a little more detail. But today, I mean, what we really wanted to do is congratulate all the people that we were able to announce, uh, mm -hmm. winners of uh, their specialty uh, crop grant. Uh, really fine folks in that group. Really, really great mm -hmm. organizations. Well, you can be really proud that you uh, won. And we're really excited. Uh, Amanda will be uh, reaching out as we set these up and we'll get these in play for everybody. And so it's, it's pretty exciting that we continue to do this. As always, if you have ideas, if you have questions, reach out to us. We're here to support what you're doing and, uh, and really appreciate people taking the time to watch these live and unrecorded. And you can always go and uh, you know, send us emails after the fact we're always excited to um, talk to people and let them know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So thanks for coming in on short notice, Amanda. Thank you. Uh, I, Amanda loves doing marketing and, and is not so comfortable or used to the TV <laughs> studio, we'll put it that way. So we just grabbed her and said, come on in and help us out with this because she really knows this stuff. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate all you do. I, I want people to know that you are, you're, you know, you're doing three jobs and we're very, very appreciative of all your extra work these days. Thank you. So with that, folks, thanks very much. Uh, we'll see you next week.